plug the USB cable into the USB connector on the box. Also plug the power uh, supply into the power supply jack. One more thing you might want to do is wire tie the uh, cable for the or the uh, power cord for the router to uh, the top to keep it from flopping around. Plug the other end of your USB cable into your USB port on your PC. And turn on the power switch. The green light should come on. Okay, with the power on the controller box turned on, first thing you need to do is set the uh, COM port properties. Go to the control panel. Uh, what we're looking for is the device manager. In XP, uh, you go to the control panel, system, hardware tab, and then you'll find the device manager there. Different versions of Windows have the device manager in different locations. Uh, in the device manager, once you finally get there, there'll be a listing for ports, COM ports and uh, printer ports. If you click this open, what you'll do is you'll see a USB uh, serial port with a COM number. Double click on that to get the properties. And you go under port settings, and in port settings, uh, you don't have to worry about these parameters because those will all get set by the uh, machine controller program. But if you click on the advanced tab, uh, there are a few parameters you need to set. Uh, the first is you have to select which COM port to use. You want to select, generally you want to select either COM port 5 or COM port 6. If it says the COM port's already in use, uh, don't worry about that because that probably means that uh, at some time something was connected, but if nothing else is connected uh, that you're using COM5 or COM6, you can go ahead and use one of those. The other parameters that you want to uh, select, uh, the receive buffer uh, has a default value of 4000 or something like that. What you want to do is you lower the receive buffer value to 64. The transmit uh, buffer also will default to 4000 or something. You want to uh, set that also to 64. And lastly, there's this latency timer that the default is 16. What you want to do is go ahead and set that to 8. Uh, so with the COM port set to 5 or 6, receive uh, uh, buffer and transmit buffer to 64, latency timer to 8. Go ahead and click on OK. OK, and you can close all of these windows. Once you've set the uh, COM port uh, number in the, uh, using the device manager, the next thing you want to do is go to the directory where you've got all of your uh, files for the uh, PSCNC program and open the PSCNC.ini file, the initialization file, with the notepad editor. And you'll see one of the, the uh, first parameter of the uh, initialization file is uh, the COM port number. So what you want to do is set the COM port number, which is by default set to COM5, set it equal to whatever you set using the device manager, either COM5 or COM6. Go ahead and close that and we should be ready to go. Now we're ready to run the uh, PSCNC controller program. I've copied a shortcut to the program onto the uh, desktop. Double click on that. First thing you get is a splash screen that warns you to be careful using this program. Go ahead and click on OK. Now if you haven't turned on the motor power already, uh, go ahead and turn it on now. And what you'll hear is a little bit of a clicking noise, and that's the uh, motors going ahead and uh, initializing themselves. Next comes up is a uh, prompt to run the homing procedure. Uh, it's a good idea to do this. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it, but it makes sure that the um, milling machine kind of knows where it is at, at all times. So go ahead and click on yes. The homing procedure moves each of the axes up against its hard stop, the z-axis in the positive direction, and then the x-axis in the minus direction, and then finally the y-axis in the plus direction. After it hits each hard stop, it moves the, each axis back to 
within the normal operating range of the machine. Uh, note that no uh, separate limit switches are needed. It just uses the encoder information to tell when it's run into a hard stop. With the milling machine home, what we can now do is use the jog buttons to move each axis around. Uh, Right-clicking each of the uh, axes will cause it to move at the jog feed rate, which is set by this slider bar. You can increase the jog feed rate up and down. If you want to move at the maximum speed, if you right-click on a button, you can get the, each axis to move at its maximum speed. You notice as we click on the jog buttons, the uh, um, position is displayed in the XYZ uh, display here. Uh, this happens whether we're using the jog control buttons or if we're turning the cranks by hand. You can turn each knob by hand at any time that the computer is not trying to drive it. So if you're running a G-code program, uh, the servos will be enabled. You won't be able to drive them by hand, but the minute the G-code program stops executing, you can operate each axis by hand. Once you've got all of the software working, what you want to do is make sure that uh, all of the axes are running smoothly. So what you can do is run each axis at full speed back and forth. Make sure there aren't any rough spots where the uh, motors seem like they're straining. If during the homing procedure you get any uh, if you get the any axis stopping before it actually hits the hard stop, that means you've got something binding in your drive system, uh, in the drive screw. So you probably want to disassemble it, re-loosen the screws, and uh, tighten them back up again uh, with everything semi-assembled so that uh, everything will run smoothly. Once you've got all axes running smoothly, you should break in each axis by running it back and forth through the full length of motion I don't know five or ten times and what this will do is this will uh, help smooth down the screws uh, and the nuts uh, so you'll have smoother operation the other thing you should do is on each of the drive screws you should apply a little bit of grease along each of the drive screws before you run everything back and forth same under, underneath on the x-axis. And then as you drive it back and forth, the uh, grease will get worked in, uh, in along the length of each of the drive screws.